chapter 24. So I'm going to read from Luke chapter 23, from verse 55 up to 24, from verse 1 to 12. The women who had come with Jesus from Galilee followed Joseph and saw the tomb and how his body was laid in it. Then they went home and prepared spices and perfumes, but they rested on the Sabbath in obedience to the commandment. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down, their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of the sinners to be crucified. And on the third day he raised. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all of those things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others were them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women, because their words seemed like nonsense. <laughs> Peter, however, got up and to go to the tomb, bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away wondering to himself what had happened. The word of the Lord for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Uh, this morning I want to talk to us about something uh, entitled Mothers, Mentors, Sisters. Mothers, Mentors, Sisters. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much for this incredible opportunity that we have. Uh, to just come and listen to your word. Will you speak a word to us, God? To the mothers uh, who are a part of this congregation, to the mothers who are listening, but also to the sons and the brothers and the, past, and the fathers and the husbands, God, that you will speak a word to each one of us for where we are, God. So I just open myself to you and I say, will you use me as a vessel? I'm available to you. Then my word be so simple. But let it be powerful enough that you can use it to change someone's life and bring hope and encouragement to someone in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, this morning, when you look at the, the text, uh, we, we just read, or uh, maybe let me just backtrack. Mother's Day is one of those days that is amazing, beautiful. We have the cards that come, and we have the flowers that come, and we have all the posts on Facebook and all the incredible memories. Uh, for some of us, it makes us think back and take time to sit and reflect about how precious our mothers have been in our lives and about what a blessing we had to just have them. Um, not just give birth to us, but to raise us and to shape us to become the men and women we have become. But unfortunately, Mother's Day also is also a day that at times brings the most painful memories. It's one of those days where for people who have wanted to be mothers for so long, have prayed and have done all the good to just be able to nurture and carry that baby in their arms, and they have never, they have never, never been able to, and then suddenly, and everybody else is celebrating, and they have, they go on Facebook and they have all these face posts of all their friends uh, celebrating their mothers, and then they realize, wow, am I actually even a mother? Can I nurture? Can I? Is there anything to me that that that, that really that is really important and that is really valuable? So to some it is that kind of pain, uh, but also to some it's the pain of the child the loss because maybe they were too young and didn't know exactly what to do and didn't know how to nurture that child and made some wrong decisions and maybe lost their child to the system or lost their child to to circumstances or lost their child to to situation and. The memories of, 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 of this brings that to them like, wow, it looks like I failed somewhere. Or it's to those who lost their child, not, not just to the system and then lost their child back to God. 
They lost the child on this earth, and then the child is living somewhere else. And the memories, when they come to mothers, and they think of, wow, how I wish he was here, how I wish she was here. This is what we would have done on this day. This is how life would have been and on this day. And, and as much as it's a day to celebrate at times, it's a day to cry. And it's a day to, to think and to reflect uh, for so many. And, and for, other, for other mothers, it's just the, at times it's not just the joy and the celebration, but it's not just the pain, but it's just the, the remembrance of the people that we've had to influence, that maybe we've never had a child, or maybe we've never had family, or it's a mother who had to give up.
is Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene is one of those um, women that Jesus picked from the street. You know those people that you meet um, are just like that, and you're like, and then people how we became friends, and we just became friends. And she's talking with Jesus, she's the one who brought her perfume and poured it on the feet of Jesus, expensive and precious. She was the, one, the kind of woman who just saw Jesus as like, wow, looks like we are, we are from, we are brothers, you're my brother, but from the same different manner, then you are my brother. So from today I adopt you, you will become my sister and we are going to do this thing together. And she was with Jesus every way. Followed him, loved him. It wasn't the kind of, it wasn't the kind of love was so. The kind of brotherly love she was like, I've got you. The way you defended me and you, you, you got, you had my back. So it is the same for our relationship. So we see, see three significant women that um, God brings into the life of Jesus. And I'm imagining if anybody needed people in their lives to fulfill their destiny, it wouldn't have been Jesus because Jesus was God. If anybody needed an extra help in their life to get to a place where they had to get to, it wouldn't have been Jesus. But the amazing thing is that Jesus is not the only one that God shows up to and brings people in their life to help them enter into their destiny. If you go back a little to the book of Exodus, we see Moses. Moses was conceived by this woman who was a slave and had no influence and knew nothing. But then God had a destiny for Moses, which was a destiny to be able to deliver Israel out. And Moses had to get to a place of influence so that he can know what leadership is, so he can deliver the Israelites. And God brought on Moses' path the daughter of Pharaoh who took Moses in and said, you are my son, and raised him in the palace and taught him what leadership and kingship and influence was. And then later, Moses was released. So if you see all the significant people and all of that that come to our lives, and so what I want to say about this morning is, for those of us who think, well, I don't have a mama, if you just look a little, you will realize that God brought you a mama. God brought you a woman somewhere, sometime, who shaped and mentored you somehow because God knew that even though your natural mama wasn't there, there was, you were going to leave this woman to shape you and mentor you in the way that was, you were going to be, to, for you to become who God has called you to become. But then also for some of us, it's not only that our natural mothers trained us and equipped us in a certain way, it's also that there is a role they can play and there are times to enter into purpose and destiny. We have to be willing to let the kids go. And we have to be willing also to say, Mama, I love you so much. This is the next step. I think God is bringing this relationship in my life. And I want to be able to, to cherish and mentor. And not disconnect from Mama because Mama is important. But hold Mama tightly and at the same time hold the mentor tightly. Because you need both to enter into where God is calling us to enter into. So we see these three significant women in the life of Jesus. Three important women. And a few things that I want us to look at their lives. The first one was these women, they were living in a culture where the testimony of women were rejected. If you look at in chapter in verse 12, verse 11 of the text we read, the Bible says their story was considered like nonsense. When they told the disciples like, oh, Jesus is raised and we saw the angel and we're like, you guys know you shouldn't be talking because what you say is nonsense. You don't consider it. You don't see the importance. That was the kind of culture that women lived in. And they were not valued. They were not, they were not of any significance. But these women did not worry about what people thought. They didn't worry about what society said. They didn't worry even about what the disciples of Jesus thought about them. They were like, oh, okay, you don't believe me, we believe it. And they were all their way singing and dancing and like, we cannot be stopped. We will live this thing. We love Jesus. We are behind him. You might not like us, but we like him. And it was just so significant. So that's something that was significant. But this another thing about these women, not only were that when they went were willing to go against culture, but is that these women loved Jesus with a passion. Almost all the disciples of Jesus except John ran away when Jesus was being crucified. Some of them went from a distance and they were watching. Then all these women were right there. They were like, Jesus, we love you. They're going to kill us. We are right there. And I don't know that's incredible that at times even in our weekends, they're the ones who stick there. 
People can easily, at, I'm not as if that are not incredible, that are amazing. They are good, they are strong. But there are times when we get to our weekends, the person you want to cry to is not that because that is going to say, why those tears are man up? <laughs> or woman up. My mom is going to say, oh no, come. Oh, it's okay, I understand how you feel. And maybe say a prayer over you and just comfort you in that, in that season. There's just something about motherhood that knows how to be present with you when you grieve. Knows how to be present when you are in pain. Knows how to be present when you fail and everybody else says you are good for nothing. Your mama is going to still say, it's my child. It's my son. It's my daughter. I love them. And I think that's that incredible thing about, because all the disciples of Jesus that Jesus had been with and preached to over and over, all these guys, they had seen miracles. The, the first time they saw Jesus in the witness, they all ran. The first time they saw Jesus in his weakest, they were like, whoosh, we thought there was something good coming out of this. Mm -hmm. But the women stuck. They were like, okay, Jesus, we love you. We don't care what people think. We don't care what's happening to you now. We have said we love you. We love you. We are in this with you forever. And for many of us, that's how our moms have been. It's not as if they have been perfect. No, but they have stuck with us. When we messed up, they were really there. And I feel like at times you don't understand your mom when you're a teenager. <laughs> and you you get upset with them when they give you that advice and they give you that counsel as you start growing older you're like wow I love you mama please God don't let them ever go just let them stay forever and ever and ever and ever and ever yeah I'm getting emotional because I feel like that's how I feel because I used to get so upset with my mom like they're my friends don't you understand and she's like you can't walk around with them no not even ask me and then now I'm like, wow, thank you. That was how much you loved me. That like you protected me. You were making decisions for my good that I didn't even know. And then when I decided to disobey and I went out and I messed up, when I came back, she still said, come and help me. Like, who does that? Only mothers do that kind of thing. And so we have these women who are just incredible, who are present with Jesus in this wicked were present right there and at the crucifixion. But the incredible thing is that these women are not only present with Jesus at his crucifixion. It's another thing that is significant is that these women are the same women who go back home and they make spices. They follow uh, Joseph of Arimathea. They went and saw when Jesus was buried. It's, it just breaks. It just like, blows my mind. Went and saw when Jesus was buried. Went back home and decided to make spices. The spices were expensive. It was a lot that they made them to make sure. And their intention was to pour the spices on the body of Jesus to push. When I was reading them all, just trying to study to understand why they said it was not the smell to be taken away. So that even if his body starts to decay, as much as they could keep the smell away from Jesus, they were going to do it. And for many of us, that's what mothers have been. That's what mentors have been. That's what the people, the women God has brought in our lives, that's what they have been, to put the smell away. The time when we felt like, man, nothing good can come out, those women came around and they, they just put some perfume and it's like, oh, wow, okay, something good can come out of me. I can smell good. And like, like life and love and value and the sense of purpose I came back and we were like, yeah. There are several about Several men who, who life was just awesome, let's talk until the day they got married. They're like, oh wow, okay, I better put my life together again. Now I better move because it's just something. I think one of my friends said, if there were no women in the world, maybe men would not even take a shower. That was a guy. <laughs> they talking. So because there's something that women know how to do to just make us line up. When you just see, when you see how you want to fix things. And I think it's just a blessing because God has given us that grace to nurture, that grace to be able to mold, that grace to be able to build. So whether you are building in the life of your natural child or you're building in the life of a child you teach in school, know that you are still a mother or you are a mentor. And that fragrance that you give to the life of that child matters a lot. Now the child might be upset with you because you're trying to help their life become better, but 10 years down the road that child is going to say, I'm grateful for this teacher. I think when I posted on my Facebook page, there were, there were just there are a few women that I can look back. I didn't grow up in so much wealth. I didn't grow up in 
so much um, uh, abundance. Uh, going from a single mother, so when you lost your dad very young, you manage everything. But God had to place me in the lives of other women who knew how to live in influence, with people of influence, who knew how to relate to people from other contexts, who knew what leadership was, what influence was, and not be intimidated. And I had to be around them and watch them and listen to them. I like, okay, this is what you do when you're in leadership. This is what you do when you're a woman of influence. This is what you do when you sit around people who maybe who uh, look more valuable or more important and who are people in your pocket. This is how you relate. I had to be trained by all those women to ever get to where I am. If I ignored the influence of those women around my life, I would never have been here. Because I feel like I can have a challenge in our generation. We feel like if it's not my mama, then it's not important. But it's not only my mama that makes me. It is many other women put together that shapes me to become who God has called me to be. And it's so important that we value that. And, and in our culture particularly, as much as we want to stay to this close-knit close family that is so important and so valuable, let your child, children hang out with grandma. Let them hang out with auntie. Well, the God fearing ones, not me. <laughs> Let them hang out with auntie. Let them go and see this. Hang out with this, your other friend who loves God and works with God. And maybe do something different that can, that can spark a sense of purpose, a sense of direction, a sense of. Because it's so important, especially in the life of a girl child, to not just see only their mama, but to see other women that they dream and they want to ever become. Other women of influence, other women who have made it happen. Because as much as we think we live in a world that oh wow, there is freedom. Yes, we can become anything we want to become. At times, a child doesn't believe that until they see somebody they know who has been able to like become what God has called them to become and not and break out from the rules of society. <clears throat> so it's so important and so vital and so valuable that we teach our daughters to know. Yes, I am mama, I'm important, but then know that the mentor in your life is also important. Know that maybe the professor in school, like I met one at, at Asbury, and she taught me exactly what it meant. She was a white lady, but she taught me exactly what it meant. How do you live like an African in a culture that is everybody skin color, most people are different from you. And there were places she told me on campus, you can't go to this town. If you're going to travel to this place, you have to make sure you have somebody else with you. She became like a mama, even though she was a professor. And I called her my school, my school mama. I don't want to call her name because people. But it's so important that that we, we recognize that God doesn't only bring mothers to our lives, but He brings those mentors. And the last people that God brings that we saw is those sisters who come around and they supported Jesus. And she was there, Mary Magdalene. She brought her wealth. She brought her support. Jesus could lean on her. She let Jesus, Jesus let her wash his feet. They had become so close. And I felt like Jesus got to understand women better because Jesus hung out with her sister. She, she knew how to treat when he, when he was about to die. He told John, this is your mother. Make sure you take care of my mother. Because she understood the emotions and how women felt. Because she surely saw her, his relationship with his sister that God had given him. Taught him exactly how women go through stuff. And she was like, I don't want mama to go through all this by herself. She needs someone else who's going to support her. And, and for those of us who are blessed with siblings, brothers and sisters, take advantage of that. Let all you can learn. Take, grasp all the wealth you can. But then if you don't have a, if you're a single child, you don't have a brother or a sister or whatever, take advantage of the brothers and the sisters in Christ. There are so many, so much you can learn. And deepen those relationships just like Jesus did. And take and, 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 and get the wealth, wealth from that that we can get. get. So, so this morning, my goal is to be able to let us know that you don't have to be a mother by natural birth. Or a mother because you have a son or a daughter. You might not have ever given birth to a child. But you can mentor somebody. You can influence somebody's life. And some of us have already done some of you, there are so many kids that will call you, they might not call you mama, but they call you mentor. When they look back in their life, they can say, Miss, this helped me because they were my teacher. And if I'm, this one today was because of what they taught me. There's someone who can say, 
when I was going through this, I wouldn't have been able to ever make it because of this mama in my life. So as we celebrate this mother, I say, I want to celebrate you too. Because you might say, oh, there is no child to send me a flower. Uh, there is nobody to send me a bouquet. There is no one to call me. I want you to know you are mother. <coughs> that there is somebody you mentor. And that there is somebody, someone who is calling you sister. And you, you might not understand the depth and the value of how much you invested in your lives. But I want you to know that those days you spent together, those conversations you had, that that was what shaped them to become what they have become. And you've got to celebrate that. You are valuable. You are important. So, happy Mother's Day, happy Mentor's Day, happy Sister's Day. I will make it a celebration for all women and not just a celebration to those who have physical children. So, happy Mother's Day.
just celebrate Mother's, Mother's Day. Let you know that we are valued in the eyes of Jesus. That we are important. That we have work. And it doesn't matter what the status is. It doesn't matter whether you have a child or you don't have a child. It doesn't matter whether you've lost a child or you have. It doesn't matter whether you're a single mom and struggling between two jobs and raising the kids. It doesn't matter where you are, that Jesus shows up to you. And he wants to show up to you even now and present. On the days that it's difficult, he wants to show up. On the days that it's easy, he wants to show up. On the days that life is good, being a mama is incredible, he wants to show up. On the days when you feel regret, he wants to show up. He wants to be present with you throughout this journey of being a mother, being a grandmother, being a great grandfather, whatever it is. He wants you to know that he's right there with you. And he doesn't look on you the way society looks on you. He sees you from the heart of his father, which is the heart of God. So as we go this way, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God which passes all human understanding, may that keep our hearts and minds. And may we remember what a blessing it is to have a mother, to have a sister, to have a mentor, to have a woman placed in our lives by God. And to this um, morning, God, we are so grateful for that. We are so grateful that even the world could not be, like multiplication would not happen in that way without women who are willing to carry us in their wounds and nurse us for nine months. Thank you for all the women who are willing to do that. Thank you for the women who did not um, uh, throw us out, God. They might not have taken care of us the way we wanted to, but we are thankful at least they gave them to us. Thank you. We are so, so grateful, Father, for our mothers, for when they failed, for when they succeeded, for when they excelled, for when they stumbled. And this morning, we come to celebrate them. We thank you for all the men who have supported them this far, because we know they couldn't have done it with all the, the fathers, with all the, the brothers, with all the men who stood by them to make this happen. And we are so thankful for the men they could lean on when they felt weary. For the fathers they can turn to when they don't know what to do. Thankful for the fathers who have been faithful. For the men who have stood by the side of their wives and their daughters to help them raise them to become women of influence and women of dignity. Thank you so much, God. We bless and we give you praise. Okay, with the peace of God that passes all human understanding, his shalom, nothing missing and nothing broken, may that be your portion, both now and forevermore. And we say the Lord's prayer together. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom God. come, thy will, will be done on earth as in earth. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mentors and Sisters Day. I just changed. Thank you all so, 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 so.